2000年の歴史を刻み受け継がれてきた恐るべき暗殺犬があったその名を北斗神剣天空に連なる7つの星のもと一子相伝の北斗神剣をめぐって悲劇は繰り返されるいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやい I'm not going to say it. I'm a little bit afraid to. I'm afraid it's gonna get me demonetized. So, yeah. Hope you guys don't mind. Um, but yeah, this this looks really cool. Venom versus. <laughs> Ought to be great. Um, by the way, I'm selling t shirts.、Uh, they're called The Cult of Kenshiro. If you want to know the way, the fist of the North Star, you gotta buy one of these shirts. Uh, they're three dollars a piece. They, they come in extra, extra large because you are. The, the people that are going to join are really strong, huge individuals like Kentro. You know, nobody else can join. No, no, none of the small people. We got some kids' hats. But remember, Cult of Kentro. Or maybe I should do that backwards. Cult of Kentro. There you go. Remember that. Remember C O K. See, okay. Alright, l let's go. Let's get into this death battle. Jokes aside. I don't know why I did that joke. I was thinking about it earlier in the bathroom. It's always nice to have a best friend attached to your hip. Makes sense、like、now that I think about it. That's my shotgun leg. But these two take their、leg. friends even further than that. Venom, the lethal symbiote and Spider Man's best frenemy. And Krona, the deadly demon sword from s o u l s name. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. So, yep.、Yeah. At the beginning of time, weird. in the far away reaches、fighting. of space, the Klintar rose from a living darkness. Excuse me? One of these amorphous the Klintar? was Venom. Who was a freaking loser? Hey, don't look at me. All the goop aliens were saying it. So they kicked the poor slime ball straight off the planet. In its exile, the symbiote underwent a number of misadventures which firmly shaped its personality. It bonded to a heroic Kree soldier rescuing refugees. That's friggin' awesome. A violent awesome. monster who committed genocide. And. Apparently, Deadpool. Damn, no wonder Venom's so messed up in the head. Eventually, the symbiote was discovered by Peter Parker, your friendly neighborhood Spider Man. It gave him a pretty slick black suit and awesome new powers. It does But after、cool. finding out it was a confused raging、Die、psychopathic alien,、brains. Pete decided to exercise it with the power of Christian Ruck. A wise decision, although ill timed, as this is the only time to finally meet its greatest partner, Edward Brock. Eddie was a journalist with the unluckiest backstory ever. While、mm. trying to uncover the identity of a serial killer, he blamed the wrong guy. The same day he published his article, Spidey caught the real killer, who lived right next door to the dude Eddie blamed. Long story short, <laughs> Eddie was fired from his job, divorced by his wife, and disowned by his father. Who already blamed Eddie for his wife dying in childbirth?、Damn. On top of all of that, Eddie learned he developed adrenal cancer with only a few <laughs> months left to live. Man, Jesus. I thought 2020 was rough. I almost don't blame him for becoming a supervillain. With all hope lost, he begged God to take it all away <laughs> and got an answer. 
the symbiote. Just Please like no. Captain Planet Don't remind with me their of him. powers combined, these two losers I only like that movie because of the Sandman. Super loser. Sandman was Well, no, good. they actually became a horrifying monster with all of Spider-Man's powers and then some. Their mutual hatred of Spider-Man caused the symbiote to bond to Eddie like no host ever before. They were perfect, a terror in the night, an unstoppable demon. They were Venom. It even cured Eddie's cancer. Sort That's of. Good. It's complicated. Apart from Spider-Man's webbing and web-crawling powers, Venom can use shape-shifting to mold his body into cool doodads. Swords, shields, tendrils, worm monster things, even wings. Yeah, good imagine Marvel seeing versus Capcom this guy too. flying outside your window at night. Well, good luck sleeping ever again. Venom can camouflage his entire body heal severe wounds like impalement and lost limbs, see Ow. all around him at once, and psychically project emotions onto others. Normally, this just makes people feel sorry for themselves, like Wiz on Tinder. But one <laughs> time he convinced a bunch of other symbiotes that life was meaningless and they killed themselves. That was a bad joke. Shit, that's dark. If desperate, the symbiote can even invade the bodies of others okay, well, and make them Okay, well that's not good for children. Out. Gross and awesome. But if he doesn't want to pop them like a fun balloon, he can just take over their body like a creepy puppet master. While attached to a victim, Venom can control them by fusing the symbiote to their nervous system, specifically the brainstem and frontal lobes. He's so Fighting buff. off this mind control is extremely Wolverine difficult claws. unless you have powers that can directly counter it, such as another symbiote. Oh god! Aliens, tentacles, and mind control? Are we sure <laughs> oh this god. episode is rated E for everyone, or do we need to start blurring stuff? Uh, don't worry. Aside from being a horrible mass murderer, Venom's stories are completely wholesome. <laughs> right. Venom uh -huh. proved a dangerous thorn in Spider-Man's side and frequently ruined his life. Even taking a page out of my favorite book, The Most Dangerous Game, and hunting him on a private island. Yeah, he was the coolest your rival ever, book. but of over the years, things kind of calmed is. down a bit. They even teamed up every so often. See, even with so much anger, Eddie had a legitimate desire to protect others. As a teenager stealing his dad's car, he accidentally ran over and killed a child. Oh, Despite man. his desire to confess, <clears throat> his father forced him to plead innocent and rig the jury. The guilt has weighed him down ever since. So while Venom does have a hunger for human brains, he'd rather eat the face off a criminal than an innocent person. Venom's as tough as they come. He survived Ghost Rider's penance stare. He's strong enough to toss a well, tank hundreds of feet up and fast enough to take down Spidey 2099, who once caught Mjolnir while it was moving 2,000 times the speed of sound. Although Good Venom God. does not possess the spider sense that allows Parker to react in microseconds, absolutely ridiculous. he can still keep up with all the usual Spidey gallery. Plus, while symbiotes have a severe weakness to high-pitched sound and heat, he's developed resistances to them. Like when he took oh this God, giant carnage. explosion, or when he survived a sonic scream from some mutant gremlins that shattered all glass within 10 miles. While he may be tougher to take down than most other symbiotes, you know who would make a good carnage? You guys are probably weaknesses. gonna hate me for this, However, but... However, his symbiotic uh, genes provide far more help than Woody Harrelson Harrelson This includes traits and memories from other carnage. hosts, like Scorpion and Flash Thompson. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Bullets are a genetic trait? How do I pass that down? Venom would certainly need a lot of firepower to survive an That's encounter really cool. with the symbiote god. Oh, geez, here we go. At first, the Clintar symbiotes were really? seen as a peaceful people, but turns out they were actually living weapons forged by the primordial deity Null in an attempt to conquer the universe. And I bet next up, Marvel decides their magic maple syrup people from Asgardian IHOP. <laughs> but okay, cosmic sludge made by alien Satan. Let's go with that. You know what? Despite I dig it. All, I Eddie like it, actually. Eddie and the symbiote have proven they're cool. far more than the dark legacy the Clintar were intended for. They've even gained the respect of the Avengers and eventually Joke. considered Spider-Man a friend. Sort of. It's complicated. Eddie really is the best pal Venom could have found. And let's be real, he just looks freaking badass. She has everywhere, even in your life. My favorite Spider-Man animation ever. In ancient times, a demonic being known as the Kishin ravaged humanity, nearly driving all mankind into the depths we go. of madness. I'm soul this leader. monster could only be defeated and sealed away by the God of Death. So, uh, why is the literal God of <laughs> Death so goofy looking? You ever seen <laughs> Death me. Note? Hell, even Thanos' girlfriend he is gets scarier real. than this clown. He gets ungoofy looking. If you are looking. unfamiliar with the world of Soul Eater, prepare yourself. 
it's different. Mm -hmm. Well, not one in the return of the apocalypse. Death and his oven mitts founded a school, Death Academy. Here, warriors called Meisters would train to fight evil using the power of their souls. They even got neat demon weapons that doubled as people. Together, they learned courage, chivalry, unbreakable friendship. You know, all, all that anime crap. Krona Gorgon style. was not one of these students. Buckle up, it's all Gloomsville from here. Deal with it. I don't think I know how to deal with this situation. Throughout their childhood, Krona was abused by their mother, Medusa, a witch obsessed with the legendary Kishi. You can see where this is going. Anime Uma Thurman was such a fangirl, she figured, hey, why don't I make my own Kishin? So she used her child as a guinea pig in a bunch of crazy experiments. You know, it kind of sounds like something you do, Wiz. Don't be silly, I only use actual guinea pigs. Part of Medusa's great experiment included a bonding Krona to a guy. weapon, much like the Meisters <clears throat> of Death Academy. However, joining with Ragnarok was a bit more literal. Ragnarok used to be your run-of-the-mill transforming weapon person until Medusa melted him alive in black blood. So that's blood. why. Black blood being another experiment of hers. Krona's own blood is, in fact, this same black blood, which they can remotely control. It can be used to heal wounds and even harden as a sort of internal armor. Basically, it's just the sludge is the reason they're fighting each other. I'm Black Sludge, you're Black Sludge, let's fight. Into Krona's bloodstream. From that point on, Krona and Ragnarok were two halves of the same person. The meek and tortured child firmly attached to their loud and brazen weapon. It was and an asshole. Raggy has that black blood control too. They can yank poor Krona around like a puppet. They can use black blood to create wings, thorny vines, all kinds of weapons. And big ass needles. Ugh, I hate needles. What's up with that mouth when he transforms into a sword? That thing's messed up. Like the Meisters, <laughs> Krona can wield their own soul in combat. Amplified by Ragnarok has a technique called Scream Resonance. Think of it like hooking an electric a guitar up to an amp. Though Berserk. more akin to a screeching banshee on LSD. I didn't know you play. I don't. It's incredibly powerful, causing internal damage to foes and making Ragnarok vibrate to increase his cutting power. What? <laughs> hey, are you okay? What? With this weapon at their... What the hell? I'm about to clap them cheeks, Slam Song! Krona set out on a quest to become a Kishi, which required quite a lot of homicide. Yeah, Ragnarok can absorb the souls of dead people, and supposedly enough souls will turn Krona into the Kishin. So they went around slaughtering hundreds of people. Despite their name, Death Academy wasn't exactly a fan, particularly their star student, Maka Albert. Don't worry, she and Krona ended up becoming good friends, until they weren't. Sort of, it's complicated. As a pawn in Medusa's mission, Krona gained several levels of new potential. Notably, after gaining or absorbing the powers of the monstrous Black Clown. You know, I need to I need to read this manga. I like the anime, the but does it go farther than the All anime? All of which increased Krona's abilities, the especially the Black Blood. Now Krona can turn their entire body into goop, and the slightest touch could inflict madness. That's madness with a capital M, by the way. This madness is a corruptive effect that causes targeted variants of delusion or obsession, often spread as a wavelength. The wavelength of Krona's mad blood specifically causes violent psychosis. Krona may be a pun, but they're a badass. They can cut through a whole ghost ship, cover the moon with sound waves, open the moon's mouth? What the hell is wrong with that moon? Krona yeah. and Ragnarok have held their own against multiple Death Academy students, including Maka, Death the Kid, and Black Star. Sometimes all at once. Kid once flew from Nevada to Egypt in less than a minute, and Black Star is even faster. He's dodged oh, lasers yeah, and been tracked moving over 20 kilometers in six microseconds while approaching Baba Yaga Castle. And Krona's been able to make enough mad blood to crush a whole goddamn <laughs> John, Ukrainian city. John well, Wick's city isn't new. Castle. <laughs> we can use a similar metropolitan area in Ukraine, Kiev, for instance. With this in mind, Kiev. Krona must have created over 9 trillion tons of black blood, enough to fill over 6 billion Olympic swimming pools. But Krona's a big leap from Invincible. They've had their shit kicked in plenty of times, and their hardened black blood can only block so much. Even then, Medusa's plan ultimately succeeded. After years of scheming, Krona absorbed the power of Ashura and became a Kishi. Well, more like Kishin absorbed Krona, but 
close enough. But with the power of friendship, Krona ironically wound up defeating the Kishin once and for all. Despite their life being nothing but destruction, Krona was the one who ultimately saved the world. The manga with panels an look good. Side effect of a new madness wavelength that made everyone what in the heck? Boobs. Truly a positive effect on people everywhere. <laughs> I'm tired of trying to figure out how to deal with you. I'm sick of this. All God, right, the are set. just go the away. Let me play Smash Brothers. First, instead of chewing on brains and souls, how about chewing on blue? This episode is sponsored by Blue Chew. If you want to increase your performance confidence in bed, try Blue Chew. Stop. I don't have problems with that. Trust me! Hello? No kid watching this has problems I with dirt. I'm sure. Hey! Pay attention, you <laughs> turd! You turd? Ah, lucky day! Two brains for the price of one! Ha! I don't think I can handle this right now! <laughs> oh, the webs. You pulled it off pretty easily, kid. You super strong? Dinner time. Oh god, this is not good for the symbiote. Isn't that gonna be like a frequency that just destroys symbiotes? Persona, Jojo, He's gone. shit. What is he? We are the ones hiding under your bed, teeth ground sharp and eyes glowing red. Oh God. <laughs> Your blood. I know. <laughs> it's black. <laughs> Here we go. Wake up, stupid! <laughs> teeth. <laughs> This is crazy. I wasn't expecting it to get this nuts, but okay. We are the darkness. We are your nightmare. Oh we are Venom. I hate you. Edgy. Yeah, it's kind of what I figured was going to happen there. Okay, I'm Man, these symbiotes really need to stop picking fights with pink-haired anime characters. They didn't pick the fight. <laughs> crazy. Venom was Some asshole said, <laughs> "It'll be funny." Shape shifting, grown him, camouflage, uh, and multitude uh, of weapons uh, kept Venom him. on guard. Unfortunately, Venom lacked the power needed to keep up a prolonged fight. Yeah, Krona matching Black Star's speed makes for a pretty clear difference. Krona could reach Mach 9000, while Venom only topped out around Mach 2000. And hmm. while Venom has Just shown incredible 2000. physical strength, Just a small loan of a million dollars. Shame, he could never compete with nine trillion tons of mad blood. Which, by the way, that precise control of the black blood totally meant Krona could push out any of Venom's attempt at being a puppeteer. And Krona's shown even greater feats of strength as well. 
Assuming all of the moon's teeth are similar in size and stone, opening this jaw is equivalent to lifting over 10,000 tons. Of course, the final nail in Eddie's coffin was the fact that half of Krona's arsenal was sound-based, basically yeah. Venom's kryptonite. Somewhat. Recall that Venom did gain a notable resistance to sound attacks, so we needed to determine if Krona's sonic waves were great enough to effectively harm him. You know those gremlins who shattered every window in 10 miles with a screech attack? The symbiote barely survived it, so that's a good high end to look at. It takes at least a hundred decibels to shatter glass normally. To cover that much distance, the combined sonic blast must have equaled about 244 decibels. In contrast, God. in order to engulf the moon, Krona sonic waves must have reached over 275 decibels. Sounds and like yes, it. that's considering the weird size and shape of the moon. Ugh, just look at that freaky thing. Sure, 275 doesn't seem that much more than 244, but decibels increase on a logarithmic rate. This means Krona's sound attack was actually over a thousand times stronger. Vinny for sure wasn't surviving that. Eddie and the symbiote held their own with versatility, but Krona and Ragnarok had them beat in destructive power, blistering speed, and an arsenal that could take advantage of Venom's key weakness. Looks like Venom just got Ragnarokked. The winner is Krona. Thanks for watching this episode of Death Battle. Come back next week to see previews of our upcoming matchups. If you want to watch more stuff, you can click the boxes right around here, and you can always pick up some DB merch so at store.roosterteeth.com. What is next? Attention, blue team! This oh, is the God. red team! We are here to destroy you! I got a tank! People with tanks are never outnumbered! For real. Rooster Teeth influence. Coming on strong in this one. Yeah, uh, wow. Okay, so that was a great death battle. The voice acting was top notch. My God, was that amazing voice acting. Especially from the, uh, the C word kid, yes. Uh, yeah, it's great, great death battle. Remember? Cult of Kenshiro. Get a t shirt. This is fake. You can't order a t shirt. Ha ha ha. Joke funny, me make joke. Lol. Anyways, uh, yeah. Good fight. I'll see you guys next time. I don't know how I was doing this, really. I'm pretty tired from all the work and school and stuff, so. It's been kind of brutal. That's why my videos are a little late these days. Uh, I honestly don't know what to say about this death battle. It, it, it was cool. It was really neat. Uh, it's, I'm glad to see uh, one of my favorite animes, Soul Leader, getting some love. I was expecting uh, a different kind of fight between like a certain Ruby character and a certain scythe wielding character from, you know, Soul Leader, but looks like we ain't going to get that yet. I figured that would be more highly requested than Venom versus, you know, the Cucaracha. So, uh, yeah, I'm Spectral Star. Oh my, Wamo, Kodoku. Anime Uma Thurman was such a fangirl she figured, hey, why don't I make my own kitchen? So she used her child as a guinea pig in a bunch of...